The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman, Tiger Technician Hour. My pleasure to be here Monday through Friday. Of course, we're going to be off on Thursday. Got our July 4th day here in the market. So, um, meantime, back at the ranch, I just do here. Oops, that was a mistake. And so, back at back at the ranch, let's just look at uh, what we're doing. Thanks, Steve, for two great hours. Remember, we followed here with fabulous program all the way through to six, but we actually had twenty four seven with replays, etc. Um, looking at the Dow. Uh, you remember on Friday what I was talking about, Thursday and Friday, I said that at the meeting on Wednesday night that it had uh, with the Boston Investors Group, I um, had discussed a phenomenon that has occurred in the S&P and the Dow monthly charts, which not many people had picked up uh, on at all. If I, no, I shouldn't say not many people. That's not really fair. No one had picked up on uh, because unless they had used the Chapman Wave methodology, uh, where you label peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D, and that's where you've got to be be, ca be careful, or even E. But it is the manner in which we have done the moves on all the buy modes since two th 1994 that was so important to me. And what I was looking at was I was saying that there is a chance that we might have made a low a week ago Monday, that's today, um, on the on the at that very opening of the first couple of hours on Monday because of other aspects and one of the reasons why I was now very hesitant to be on the short side although we do have a let me just double check before I speak out of turn um, yes we still have a short uh, position um, one short position why I wanted to have long positions is simply because the weight of evidence at this particular point is favoring a move to the upside. Now, in that context, what is really quite important to me at least, um, looking at uh, the uh, different indexes, when I'm, I just need to move this up a little bit, there we are, now I'm actually getting a little echo there, so we'll figure that one out. What's very important to me at this particular point is, when I look at a particular index, and that index is, in fact, the volatility index. I have made just a big, big, big deal for years now about this particular um, component in the technical side of things. It made an unusual peak G top in the daily. The 120-minute chart as shown here on this particular chart of my what I show subscribers every single day. This is my my five quadrants. I've got the uh, Dow 120 here, having made a new recovery high, leg E, uh, or it is a brand new A in the 120-minute chart. My, I'm favoring A right now because the VIX index is at 16. 0.09. It's about to go to the 15. Just the other day it was 21.91. And you remember what I said? If the volatility index starts to climb into the 20 area and holds on a weekly basis, I have to conclude that we're going to go a lot higher in the volatility index and lower in the, uh, in the, in the general market. When I did that, when I went back and looked at that study of mine that I'd done some time ago and refreshed everything, going into that Wednesday talk that I gave, it just suddenly occurred to me that I was missing a huge component of um, my analysis and that I could be completely, I could be blindsided by looking too heavily on the short side. Not only that, on the short side, look, look what's happening here. I had said that the IBB, which is the biotech, this is the NASDAQ biotech um, ETF iShares, had given me some kind of a signal and said there was a chance that if there was no new high in June, that we were making a peak E top, and that top could be a top of some consequence, time, and maybe price, but at least time. Now, when I look at this, 
all of a sudden I've got a peak E lovely sell signal. We made money on the downside. We gave some, we gave it actually we gave it back by that big spike to the upside on that Monday turnaround, Monday, Tuesday. Now look at this. It's broken that pattern that I call the falling X, but there's a particular stock. If I can actually find the stock. What was it? Uh, Onyx. Yeah, it was Onyx, of course. Onyx. Onyx Pharmaceuticals had given a top, a peak D top. It had given it a peak F in the weekly and the daily had a peak F top with, uh, without breaking the 101.57 double top that I call the falling act. It did everything. It did the 200 period exponential moving average at 82.45, gave a little bounce, and then voila, out of the blue, there is a takeover talk, and they refuse at 120, and the stock goes from Friday's close of 86.82, to 131.71, that's a 51% gain in one day. Well, is that or is that not going to affect or impact the uh, Onyx Pharmaceuticals, develops uh, innovative therapies for cancer treatment? Does it affect the IBB? Of course it does. And there it is, huge move in the IBB. So in this particular framework, in this particular time frame, I'm saying to myself, wow, that was a sideways consolidation. If you remember, I was looking at the daily chart here on, uh, uh, on my show, Tiger Technician's Hour, last week, and I said the Dow had not broken up the, the – sorry, the Dow. Let me go to the Dow. I'll give you all the numbers in a minute. But the Dow had not broken down and taken out the left side low of 19th of April at 14,444. Instead, it held very nicely at 14,561, 110 points higher. So sideways con con consolidation using time rather than price. It doesn't mean to say that this is going to spiral now and continue uh, pushing up against the falling axe formation. Remember, that's in Chapman Wave methodology. What is that? That's a decline from a top peak D, E, or F, it starts to go down with lower highs and much lower lows. If it breaks that trend line, to the, to, in this particular case, it's the, not just the trend line. It is this area that I call, there it is. That's what I call the inside track, that dashed area there, the red line to the gray line. What if it breaks that and the Dow takes out, the moment the Dow takes out 15,316, then it automatically says, hey, my next target on the upside is 15,340, and then the next target is 15,542. That's the all-time high. And then what happens is starts leg D. So those are the upside parameters. What's the downside? Failure today, closing up only 60 points after a tr tremendous move like this. Seeing GE, IBM, Triple M, and UTX failing. Now, this is very interesting. Look, Triple M gets a downgrade. Where is it right now? Triple M, not MM. I'm always fascinated. I always make a mistake and type in two M's, which is um, Millennial Media Inc. And I'm always fascinated because it often has a very good move. So what happens is Triple M gaps down after making a peak F top in the weekly, peak E in the, not a peak E, a leg E in the in the monthly, pulls back very sharply in the in the daily, goes from the 113s down to 107 in very quick formation, a peak E that is. And now it is having another high-level consolidation. I have to tell you, I'm impressed. I'm very impressed with this market. Um, I'm, I'm thrilled that I was able to at least identify something that stopped me from uh, constantly wanting to the sh looking at the short side late into last week because I just don't think that that's going to work. So let's look at the num. Hey, I don't even see it right here. Let's look at the numbers. I will go to... Um, I'll go to the numbers right now. Let me first of all, remember what I said? I thought that the yields were going to come down this week, that we made a peak B in the weekly chart. I suspect that that's the case. Let me just get out of this because I need to give you numbers. So we close it out. Close the workspace. Open the new workspace. Recent. And that will be the Dow Daily Analysis. Um, Dow Daily White Charles. There, daily, weekly, monthly. I've got all the numbers right here. And here we go. 877-927-6648 is the number to call. And uh, we'll be up in a second. There we go. So, uh, black background. I'll just do this real quickly. 
Uh, the Dow is up 148 to 15,058. The S&P is up 18. That's even better. I love that. Uh, 16, 24. That means that the um, Dow is up 0.99%. Um, let's see. We've got the S&P up 1.14%. I like that. Divergence. Now, we haven't looked at this for a long time. Let me just do it now. The cyclical index is having a very nice retracement to the upside, but it needs to clear. Uh, I want to actually look at the IYC for a moment while I'm doing because it's so important. That as is, yes, very important. Why? Because the IYC, if it breaks out and goes above, um, this is leg E in the in the monthly. Uh, I believe that's a peak E. But if the IYC, which is trading at 103.59, it only needs to get to 150, 105.75, and it breaks out. That's going to be very important. Um, We've got gold. The GLD is up 168. Now, this is very interesting. Look, here's the GLD. GLD, lovely up. Is that updated? Yes, a GLD at 120.79. Very nice turnaround. One of the reasons why we went long uh, a gold stock on Friday was because I was expecting a very low priced one. I was expecting that the percentage gain that we could see from this one, one particular vehicle would be very, very strong if I was correct that on Friday I said I believe we've made some kind of a low here, a low that should give a bounce, and the bounce should take the, the GLD to the, the nine-period moving average of 122.48 to 124.78 would be the next target. Most importantly, it's how it comes out of this into the middle of the week, and it's how the dollar, jumping around a little bit if you don't mind, how the dollar, which is holding very well in peak, C possibly today makes a peak D with a stochastic at 92%. Nice uh, squash formation between the stochastic and the MACD. Can everything go up? Can the dollar go up? Can, can, oh, what are bonds doing? Down only 24, 30 seconds on the TLT. So the TLT now is at 110.20, down 24, uh, tick, uh, 24, 30, uh, down 24. And, um, that's going to be very interesting as we put this together because what's the EURUSD doing? The EURUSD currency pair is just kind of sitting there like the dollar is trying to make leg D. So um, the euro-dollar currency pair is attempting to make some kind of a base to, at 1.303 to try to get to the 1.309 area, and that'll happen if dollar, the dollar makes D and then pulls back. The dollar pulling back will also help gold. And also, have, let me see what the GCQ uh, is doing. GCQ is right now up. Oh, nice move up, just like the GLD at 1245. It does target the 1257 to 1269 area. 1267 is the nine period exponential moving average. Really important that on the weekly basis, if, the G, if gold can close above, this is uh, whatever month it is, uh, August, um, close above 1300.70, even by one penny. That'll be really important. So we have a break coming up, and even more important than the break coming up, I want to take your calls at 877-927-6648, and I have a couple of things that I wanted to talk about, and one is quarterly charts. I'll be back straight after this break. Dow's up under 53. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. With the launch of Tiger TV. 
TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesamento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. McEwen Mining is a high-growth, mid-tier producer in the Americas with a market capitalization of $1 billion. Experienced mining executive Rob McEwen, as chairman, CEO, and president, owns 25% of the outstanding shares of McEwen Mining and has put in place an ambitious business plan with the goal of qualifying for inclusion in the S&P 500 by 2015. With $70 million in cash and liquid assets as of the end of 2012 and completely debt-free, McEwen Mining is poised for growth. Production in 2013 is forecasted to grow at 24%, reaching 130,000 gold equivalent ounces. And over the next three years, McEwen Mining projects that their production will increase to 290,000 gold equivalent ounces, almost a three-fold increase from last year's totals. If you'd like to find out more about McEwen Mining, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE or TSX under the symbol MUX. Who says you can't take it with you? TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Now let's go over to the dollar because the dollar is going to be the generator. It is the generator of basically higher dollar, lower market. And what the dollar has done, and this whole uptrend, folks, has just gone sideways. The way it works, folks, is this. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Basil takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Editions Hour. And as always, Monday through Friday, 877-927-6648. Love to take your calls. Now, look at the IYC, which is a little in, in greater detail. This is the white background chart. What I'm looking at here, let me just do a click. There we go. And, and let me, oh, I didn't mean to do that. Let's just get rid of that. Ooh. Um, so the iShares, oh, I think that's going to create a problem. Now I have to stop it. Okay. The IYC is trading at 103.59, up 1.04. If it takes out that level, as I said, one, somewhere around 104.08, and then it automatically means 104.44 is the level. But more importantly, I have to then consider, is this a brand new A? Have we started a brand new move to the upside? Is this a G or an A in the weekly chart? Well, there's a whole technique that I use because, after all, from that PD, there was an instant restart, a potential instant restart. So that means I know now that with, with, with certainty that I have two ways of counting it that are, can I call it an official way? And that would say the first, um, the moment it goes to one, if it does go to 105.75, I call it a G slash C because it's, it embraces that instant restart. So, it says leg D in the monthly chart, very strong. Stochastic at 92%, but there are certain indicators here that are saying, be careful, it's getting a little overbought. So I'm going to be watching this real closely. Look at the IWM. The IWM, which of course is the Russell 2000 um, ETF, it is the iShares. 
made a peak D at 100.38 in the daily, in the weekly. It made a peak D in the monthly. But a beautiful inside bar candle from last last month, that is June, and now July starting off gangbusters. Now look what's happened. This is just the first day. We can't tell. It's got a whole bunch of days to go before the end of the month. But we can look at this and say, fine, at 98.70, all it needs to do over a period of a whole month is break 100.38. And that starts leg E up in the monthly. Now, if this is leg E in the monthly, there are a whole bunch of things that we can extrapolate. Now, I've had a bunch of information from many people who've talked about monthly, uh, about quarterly charts. Uh, one person uh, suggested that in their work, the VIX has made a quarterly peak D. Isn't that interesting? That in 2000, uh, that in, uh, sorry, a quarterly peak D made a, a D in, in 2008 at the top. Um, and leg D is unfolding in the quarterly S&P. Uh, at the meeting on Wednesday night, someone said, yeah, and showed me, showed me a way that I can get quarterlies. I can't get it in a trade session. I don't know why they don't do that. So let's go to Janice in Richborough, Pennsylvania, I believe it is. Hi, Janice. How are you? Hi, hi Basil. How are you? Very well. Thank you. Uh, I'd like it, if you could look at IBM for me. I do not hold a position, but it seemed to be um, weaker than the market. Um, okay. Now, so, so a couple of a couple of questions I've got for you. Um, you've asked me a question. I think it's only fair I can ask you a question. Okay. Uh, Janice, is this the first time you've called me? Ah, uh, yes, it is. Good. Thank you very much. I do appreciate you, that. Oh, you're welcome. I, 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 did, I thought I had not recognized your name from um, the. That's Pennsylvania, right? Yes, it is. Well, I had an experience last year in the fall going to a wedding in in Bucks County. Yeah, that's and where it, I live, in Bucks County. Oh, it is so... I was talking about it, 187.68. I'll do the two things at once. I'm just finishing up uh, on, on IBM. 187... I think it was 78 or 68. Let me just double-check. Uh, what I had said when I came back on air uh, the following week, I said, I just went to the most beautiful area. It's like it's farmland, but it's suburban farmland. It's as if everybody is so proud of their place that... Even the driveways were just beautifully um, articulated. They are, are groomed, and it's just and you see horses. I just yeah. I've never seen that actually where I've seen. It's usually you know just uh, barren land with grass and stuff growing wherever. It was really beautiful. It was just a lovely area. Yes, it so, is beautiful here. So I I I I'm not expected it was really a 188 40, 41. You can tell I'm still doing my chart. <laughs> 188 41. Okay, I just wanted to finish the left side, right side. There are a couple of things I want to talk about uh, in IBM. The chart pattern that I'm looking at is actually a negative chart pattern for IBM in the monthly chart. Why? Because I don't know if you can see my charts in Tiger TV. Yes, I can. You can. Great. I'm going to expand this one. And you will see it's had a spectacular yes, move. Now, there's a technique that I talk about. I, I talk about walking the nine-period moving average. And, oops, you can hear. I, I just heard myself out there in the background. Uh, so the nine EMA at this particular point is when, when I go back to 2006, 2007, all the way to the top. Oh, there's a break already. Um, we've got a break coming up. I'm going to finish this up in a moment, Janice, because I think I can tell you something that's quite important about IBM. All right, thank I'll you. Right back. I'll be right back. Okay. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts has officially launched at TFNN. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind software, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, Butterflies, ABCs, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the market for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, and even months searching to find. As part of our introductory pricing, we're offering licenses available at only $59 per month. We're so confident that you'll love this new outstanding piece of charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Lock in your low price today by ordering your copy at TFNN.com.
With the stock market flirting with all-time highs and volatility back, now is the perfect time for a two-week free trial to Market Insights. On Monday, June 24th, Tom O'Brien closed out all five open positions in his daily newsletter, Market Insights, with all trades being profitable and ranging from a 2.23% gain all the way to more than an 11% gain in just one position for an incredible 32.7% profit combined between the five trades. Let Tom O'Brien's years of market experience work for you. If you'd like to see for yourself what kind of trading newsletter Tom O'Brien delivers to his clients each morning, then now is a perfect time to sign up for a two-week free trial to his daily newsletter, Market Insights. In a volatile market like we currently have, the potential for fast market moves like we've seen recently is a trader's dream. So don't wait any longer. Sign up for your two-week free trial to Market Insights today at the front page of TFNN.com. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels, as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. This segment is brought to you by Harmony Gold. For more information, just click the Harmony Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. That was Captain Tiger Technicians Hour. We are back. So um, I'm, I'm on right now with uh, Janice. We're looking at... And we're looking at, uh, I'm going to have that little problem again. Let me get rid of that. And Janice in Richburg, Pennsylvania. And we're looking at IBM. Now, Janice, I have two questions to ask you about the IBM. Is this something that you, you were looking to buy from the tone of your voice? It seemed to me that you had kind of a longer term uh, look at it. It was something like uh, something that you would buy, maybe start a position, maybe even add to it a little later on, but you wanted to... A look at it on the long side. Yeah, yes. Have you owned IBM before? I actually had IBM uh, on the short side at around 199. Whoa, very good. And I took a little profit, and then I actually see it coming down right now to, I guess, which would be almost its support. Yes. Uh, well, well, okay. So now this is what I'm looking at in the we. I'm going to do something a little complicated, but you asked the question, and I think it behooves me to be able to talk about it. I just need to see that I can see it on Tiger TV the way you can. There you are. Okay. I wrote this in a long time ago. I put in what's called a Chapman Wave flat base restart. Now, it sounds really complicated, but basically what it says, that if you get something that resembles a peak D instant restart in the Chapman Wave, and by that I mean within three bars, um, it breaks to a new recovery high, and it doesn't break down uh, the, 
any of those two bars doesn't break very deeply, and then it goes to a new high, if immediately after that the price keeps coming down towards your support level, in this case the support level will be 177.35, the January 2012 low, you've got a pattern that I took me years to identify as a particular chart pattern, and I call it the flat base restart. Now, what does that, that, what does that entail? It entails studying the chart and expecting that there will be higher highs to come. Usually it goes to a peak D, it could even go higher, but at some point when that thing fails, not only does it come down, it takes out the left side low, which would mean that the target would be 177, 35 or lower, that's number one, and then the very bar that takes it out and scares the daylights out of you very quickly, could be that bar, but could be, could be within another two bars, starts a turnaround situation, and then when everyone's given up on that stock, it goes right back into the body of um, the body that it was trading in, which would mean above that 177 level. And that's when a whole you have to have a look at it completely fresh. Now, this is what I'm going to suggest here with your, with your, your... So at this point, you actually still have part of your short position, right? Yes. Great. Okay. I, first of all, can I just ask you, what, what, what allowed you to take that trade? What, what techniques did you use? Because re- that was a terrific entry point. Well, basically, what I did is I was watching it hit resistance. And uh, as soon as it broke below that, I took a short position. Okay. So it was that resistance in the 205, 206 area. It failed, and then it, sort of, it, it just broke down, and it, it gapped down on the 20th, and it went underneath all that support, correct? Right. Right. Oh, okay. fabulous. Yeah. Congratulations. You did a really nice trade there. Now, a really nice trade doesn't mean to say that it can go against you, but it, that was very nice because IBM is one of the heavies. Everyone looks at IBM on the long side, so you, were, you had the technique and the courage to take the other side. Number two is that it actually went down to uh, 188. So that's, uh, you know, for IBM, it doesn't drop nine points all that often, so that was good. Now, this is what I'm going to suggest to you. Um, so now what you've got is you've got your smaller position because you've taken, you've got a smaller position because you've taken something off. And the real question then, as far as I'm concerned, looking at this chart, because to my eye, I think I, I agree with, I'm looking at weakness in IBM. And that's what I call the rotational aspect of this particular market. And that rotational aspect is to not pick it up means that you're not identifying a really important criterion. And that criterion is, that the market can hold really well, it could actually have a high-level consolidation as some sectors just get slammed to the downside and others continue either on the upside or become the new darlings as we are seeing in some of the gold stocks that are starting to move here after last week just getting crushed in that final coded to, not final, but the final for this stage coded to the downside. So here's my recommendation. You've got your position, you took something off, so you've got some profit. It allows you a little bit of leeway because you can put some of that profit as a cushion or you can either put it to work, but it's there and it's yours to say, I've taken her off, so my trade so far has worked for me. But I'm going to suggest based on the 120-minute chart, which I keep looking at, and this gap says to me, so it went to peak A, yeah, it went peak A, B, C, D, E in the 120-minute chart. Then mm-hmm. it pulled back for the last uh, uh, decline. Now it's trying to rally back to fill the gap. I'm going to suggest to you that the short side for IBM at this point still looks like the way to go. It's had terrible rallies when the general market has tried to rally, and yet it's participated on the downside when the market's gone down. And the pattern that I'm looking at in that flat base restart says, hey, this might still get to a D, but most of the work has been done. It looks like it's gone to a G. And that G is very weak. There's a Roman candle that it hasn't quite filled from uh, four months ago. The MACD looks terrible. It's the cat that I'm pointing to. Stochastic's at 59%. The weekly chart looks even worse. I think you've got a great trade. Now, this is what I would recommend to you. Either, because IBM is only up $1.69 on a day like this, but it actually should be much higher. It should be one of the leaders, and it's not in the high-tech area. I'm going to suggest that if it goes above today's high, then wait a little bit because 195, 194 to 195.50 would be the next area because that's the nine period exponential moving average on the daily chart. And I would, I would add to the short there. 
Where would we both be wrong if we were looking short in actually rallies? If IBM starts to climb to 197 and a half, and the stochastic at 22% goes to about 28%, but that MACD, the moving average convergence in all time frames, is just very weak. I think you've got the right trade, even though the market is absolutely fabulous right now. Look, IBM's not doing very much on the upside. So my recommendation, number one, is on a let's call it short to intermediate term, meaning three to four weeks. At this point, I must say, IBM looks either it's going to consolidate or it's going to go break 188.41. And if it breaks that, then 187.68 is the next level. But 184.78 will be absolutely critical for IBM. And then all of a sudden, you start looking at the 177 area. So IBM right now looks vulnerable. I have to say that I, I believe I'll be wrong if IBM, you know, if IBM breaks 197.50, it'll be easy for it just to pop up back to the 199 level where the nine period, where the two, yeah, the nine period moving average on the weekly chart is, which has just failed to hold for weeks, for, for weeks now. So I think you got the right trade. Um, I, I would like to consider that your position you have now, you could even keep as a core position and that you would add to it on the short side. But I'm going to also suggest something else. I, I, maybe I don't have to tell you because that was your plan. I don't know what your plan is. I would probably say to you, even though 200 is the 200 period moving average with strong resistance in the daily chart, I wouldn't take a loss on this. You've taken one bit of a profit. If it does go against you, make sure that your core position doesn't take a loss. You can always come back into IBM. The way it looks, it's not going to rally all that much, but it's going to keep testing the 191 to 188 area. And if that starts to break, it's going to go lower. That's the way I'm looking at it. And I'm pleased you brought it up because it was really important in my work. I had mentioned for my um, subscribers this morning the four horsemen of the Dow, which is GE, which is acting quite nicely. Um, uh, IBM, of course, as we said, is acting very poorly, even though it's up. Triple M got smacked to the downside on a downgrade, and now it's up 78 cents. And uh, UTX, which is my pilot light indicator, is acting pretty nicely. I like, the, I like the high level consolidation in UTX. So IBM is the lag here, and the fact that it is lagging, I'm just going to look at the XLK because it's a big part of that. Um, XLK is being a little dragged down. Oh, you know, XLK is not looking that great. So that might mean that the high techs are very selective at this particular point. Hey, congratulations on a very nice trade, and bravo on the technique that you use and the courage to pull the trigger when uh, <laughs> it was kind of tough to do, I'm sure. Thank you so much, Basil, for your analysis. Thank you. Thank you very much, and I do appreciate it. Looking out, Janice, I'm also going to say looking out further, I think IBM is going to be back in play, but right now it's, it has to take a timeout. Thanks for calling. Thank you. So, folks, this is what I wanted to do. I had a number of questions that I'm going to answer now. Tesla was the first one that I got as an email. Tesla has gone to leg E. Remember that rectangle formation that I was talking about in the Chapman Wave methodology? Oh, I should have put my, my chart up for that technique. Um, well, as far as I can see, that rectangle formation that produces an inside buy mode, a buy signal that goes to a buy mode, I don't, I'm not going to say it's complete. I'm just going to say this is leg E. That's where Tesla becomes highly vulnerable at 113.99, but it's an all-time high. So two, you got, mentally, you've got to have two perspectives on it. One is you've got to say fabulous action, and the MACD is possibly about to break out um, to the upside. Stochastic said 86. That's very good. And now the other thing that's even more important is that that inverted – Roman candle that I spoke about a long time, not really a Roman candle, but it has that look to it from April, was it? From May, with a high of 114.90. It's worked its way all the way up the wick, broken out to a new high, 140.90 this week. 114.90 is going to be absolutely important. My guess is that this is leg E up in the monthly. Isn't that interesting? That it's in, in just two months, it's been able to go from kind of good to spectacular. My suspicion right now is that Tesla is just, there's a little bit of bad news that's going to come out in the next day or two. And if it breaks, instead of breaking to 118 from the high today of 100 and, uh, what did I say, it was 116.20, if instead over the next few days, there's just suddenly some news that comes out and it closes under 106.17 anytime this week, then the rectangle formation co continues as a 
high level consolidation and you can expect it to pull back to 104 or to 102. Would I short it? I don't know if that was the question. The question was just would I do an analysis? No, absolutely not. I don't like to short the sexy stocks until all my little ducks are in order. A, B, C, <laughs> D, E, <laughs> they could be in order right now. I'm a little hesitant with the market like this to actually go short Tesla. I would, to be safe, I'd much rather say I'd rather wait for a sharp, sharp pullback to be able to buy it on the long side for another sexy run up. Because remember, this is the stock. This is what I always say. At one point or another, every year there's a or every couple of years there's a sexy stock. No one can stop it. It just keeps going and going until it's, it eventually just collapses because it's gone. There's no, there are no more buyers. This could be the stock. Who knows? And I'd like to play it that way for my subscribers. It's almost like an option play that we're going to cheat. But I'm not doing anything right now. We'll see what happens at the end of the day. So that I got that done, and I have to just scroll down here quickly to see. So, oh my goodness. Yep, that's okay. So now I want to do the other thing. Was so that's Tesla. The next question I have is EFA. EFA. Why is that familiar? EFA. EFA is. Oh, iShares uh, MSCI. EFA index. I think that's that's the European index. Oh, I used to have this all notated like all my other charts. So it's just give me one second. Here's the weekly chart. Just grab it. Um, oh, it looks like looks like a little bit like an IBM chart here. So that's an A, but they could have been one penny higher. Let me just double check. Uh, it's fifty point eighty three, fifty point eighty. So that's an A. That's a B. That's a C. It's a B. C. D. E, A, B, C, D. Oh, isn't that nice? That is sweet, as they like to say in the business. There it is, down, down. Arrow. Okay, weekly chart says that it's, it's going to struggle. It's at 58.02 EFA, um, 59.23. It has to break 59.23 by maybe not this Friday, but the following Friday, and hold above it. MACD and Stochastic are saying, whoa, it's going to be tough. The, the weekly chart is it made a peak C, I believe. No, I can't do this quickly. I've got to do it thoroughly. 46.61. So this is A, B, C, D, E. Brand new A, A again, A again, B. Um, double top. I have to say that right now, IFA is looking to me like it's working really hot. I think it needs a little more time and a little trigger before it's going to really get going. My suspicion is that over the next week, it's going to be between 6, 58, well, at 58 to 81, I'd, I'd, I'd like it as a counter-trend rally, but it, it, you know what? I'm going to suggest this. If you are long and you've been long since the last few days, hold it for now. Because if it does take out 5709, yes, it's, it's probably going to test 56, 44, the low. But if it starts to move with our markets, and it can get into the gap above 58.74 and below 61.18, that will really help the monthly chart. The weekly chart has been hit so hard that it's going to take the daily and the monthly to help. It's a sandwich. Remember the one in the middle, the weekly chart always takes longer. It lasts longer on the upside, and it takes longer on the downside to, to reinvigorate, to, to turn around technically. So I'm excluding that for now. I'm saying the daily chart, okay. By today or tomorrow, it must break 58.18. It really needs to break 58.27, 58.29, somewhere around there. And then I'd say, fine. If you're in it, just raise your stop. If you're not in it and you want to visit trade, I would say there are better stocks that I would be looking at that have this particular chart formation. Question of the debt. Um, Zip says, Basil gave me positive read on Gigi last Thursday, working nicely. Yes, uh, Gigi, one of uh, our gold stock is up really nicely. It's up 10%. Recently. Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil's subscribers closed out a short position at Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to try out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page at TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. 
Also, don't miss Basil's program, the Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern on TFNN. Tom O'Brien's weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, has helped subscribers for over 10 years navigate the high-risk world of exploring and producing gold companies. And now's a great time to sign up for a free month-long trial to see the kind of insight that Tom delivers for his subscribers on a weekly basis. Every Monday, Tom O'Brien issues a quick update on the metal market, giving you his take on the HUI, XAU, GLD, dollar, bonds, and much more. Tom follows Monday's update with a full gold report which is delivered to subscribers Tuesday afternoon with detailed coverage of 24 separate gold or metal stocks as well as another 10 to 15 stocks that he lets you know are on his potential watch list. Get your month-long free trial to the gold report today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Don't spend another year navigating the metal markets on your own. Act early in 2013 and make the most of your gold and metal market investments. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Hi, folks. I'm Steve Rhodes with TFNN.com, and the trend is your friend until it changes. A free special report is now available on the homepage of TFNN.com, and if you have money in the markets, this free report is a must. If your strategy is buy and hold, this report is a must. If you're a day trader, a swing trader, a forex or options trader, or just getting into the markets, this report is a must, and it's the second best gift you'll ever receive. Look, if you buy a stock and the general market is trending in the other direction, you've reduced your odds of buying at the right time by 70%. Instead, let me teach you how to get that 70% advantage plus. The plus is a free trial to my daily newsletter service, Mastering Probability. There's no upfront deposit, no charge to your credit card, and I compress decades of education into each daily newsletter. This is a limited time offer, so act now and I'll teach you how to take the trend and turn it into your best friend. All the details are on the homepage of TFNN.com. Act now. This segment is brought to you by Backtech Environmental. For more information, just click the Backtech banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. We're back. Basil Chapman, Tax Technician's Hour. Don't forget, Larry Pesavento is coming up straight off. This should be a wonderful show. He's always with Larry. Just love watching the way he works these these different uh, techniques that he uses with his gotties and his uh, the expansions, the butterflies. So uh, that, that that's that's really something to look forward because you've got Daryl Martin and he's got his uh, that that's uh, wow. We had some terrific trades last week. Uh, uh, so we've got Daryl and Dave White. Wow, that that's really working your uh, art of the charts. There's some, been some beauties there in the art of the charts. And then we've got what is it? So we've got Tom O'Brien, four four o'clock to six o'clock. Um, that's uh, the art of the charts. The work was based on uh, a lot of Tom's work. So this is just a great program coming up. Now let's look at this. I had a question. Uh, first of all, uh, let me finish up what I was looking at, and that was yes, GG up very nicely. That's Gold Core. Now I was also asked about the FXI, Leg B, and it's FXI. Now, so FXI looks horrible. China, you know, I, I spoke about this way back. I said that China spent so much money on the Olympic Games that it would not surprise me if, in fact, they have expended everything. That's what happens to almost all countries who host the Games. They have just an unbelievably bad economic time afterwards. And that was one thing. The other was all the gold, all the copper and stuff, when you know that they've got these um, multi – what did I read? 27 or more 
major cities, when I'm talking about major cities, I'm talking about major cities of over, did they say 10 million people or something, where there are, are buildings that are absolutely empty, they built them and nobody came? Can you believe that? Yeah, I've seen pictures of it. It's just it's unbelievable. And, you, and now they're used to some of them because if you don't, if a building is not put into use and the plumbing and everything is not activated, whoa, I remember that building in London that stood for 28 years or something wasn't used. It's just that it tear it down. So this is going to be really interesting. I don't like the China index right now. Uh, China, I just see nothing is made left side, right side price time match in the weekly. If if the index breaks, I don't know if I do it now, but in the next couple of weeks, if it takes out 3162, the FXI, iShares, FTSE, China 25 ETF, whoa, that's going to not look good because then the next level is 30.14, the 200 period exponential moving average. And what have you got? You've got the H pattern that goes to an M pattern. Got to watch out for those things. So that's that. And the next question I had, was that a question for me? Um, oh, yeah, Larry says, I've been there. I, it's just amazing. I, I can't even believe that stuff. Um, so uh, let's go through this. And, and, of course, everything was China, China, China. You know what's happening? You've got to believe this. There is something intrinsic going on in the United States. Jobs are coming back. I mean, we are starting to develop more factories and, and, and things like that. I, in a way, I'm, I'm very excited about what's going on. I hope it just lasts because that's going to be the most important thing. Look at the, drive around. I came back from New York yesterday. Uh, there was a message here in the gen. There's something about uh, a, a, a tornadoes possible. Thunderstorms capable of producing a tornado is heading towards western Connecticut, West Ton. W-E-S-T-O-N, that's the city. Connecticut between Norwalk and Danbury. I have to tell you, there was an accident yesterday. It took an extra hour, hour and something to come back. But um, uh, how did I get to that? Oh, just because that was mentioned. Uh, talking about, uh, oh, on the road. I am seeing Fords all over the show, and I'm seeing more American-made cars than I've ever seen. I, I, I love it. I think that's important. Okay, now we're going to go to the charts. So uh, one thing that I didn't get to, I was asked about. Um, yes, I've gone through the volatility index. I've gone through the buying. I've gone through the rotational aspect. Something that I just want you to do here is the IYT, which is the transports. The transports are lagging. They've made a peak G top in the in the in the weekly. It's a peak C in, in the monthly. But everything about the monthly is still very very positive. Now this I IYT, which is the Dow Transport Average Index Fund. Uh, at 111.72, breaks under 106, closes under 106. At this point, I have to say high-level consolidation, and that to me is encouraging. Now, let me just do this, and I'll give you the numbers as we're about to go out. The Dow is up 161. The pattern that I'm looking at says very strong. Don't expect this to go straight up without some kind of resistance at 15,170. As soon as it breaks that, the next level will be 115,275. A close above each of those levels says that the left side target of 15,340 will be next if everything stays in order. And this is leg B and the main. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's trading newsletter. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two full weeks. That's an $85 value. Yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind. And get the edge you've been looking for.